Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, an overview, and some benchmarks on this new video card from MSI. This is the MSI GeForce GTX 650 Power Edition Overclocked. Let's start off with a closer look at the retail box. You do get a three-year warranty for this video card if you purchase in the United States, Canada, or Mexico. It's got a hybrid BIOS, which means it's ready out of the box for Windows 8. Uh, you get an enhanced PWM design with triple overvoltage. That's part of the Power Edition uh, series of video cards from MSI. Again, this is overclocked. Uh, the stock clock for a GTX 650 is 1059 megahertz. This one boosts that up to 1124 megahertz. I said the word boost, but I didn't mean to infer that this has boost clock because it does not. Boost clock is only enabled at the 660 and above, although this one just runs at that speed right out of the box. Uh, it has a trans thermal design, which is a pretty cool and unique uh, little adaptive uh, cooler. Actually, there's more information on that right here. So let's take a look. Uh, so you can set up a dual fan mode. You can actually add another fan to the existing cooler. You can run it with single fan and that's the way it is right out of the box. Or you can put it in double airflow mode by putting that extra fan on top of the existing fan and I'm guessing that gives you more static it says higher air pressure, so probably more static pressure uh, pushing air across the fins and keeping them cooler and uh, there's just sort of some of their testing and examples of the uh, enhanced thermal performance that they got with that. Uh, it uses propeller style blades. Uh, it has dust removal technology, which is pretty cool with the power additions. It will actually spin in reverse for a little while to kind of kick dust off of the fan and out of the heat sink. And then it'll do that right when you power on and then switch back to regular spinning mode, which typically draws air in. Up here at the top, uh, just a little bit more information uh, about their enhanced PWM design, some praise for Afterburner as well as their twin, twin frozer cooling designs. They're using military class 3 components, high C caps, super ferrite chokes, solid capacitors uh, in the construction of this board. And then of, of course you get access to MSI Afterburner. Actually anybody can have access to MSI Afterburner, but you do get some extra features enabled if you use MSI Afterburner with an MSI video card. I did want to at least show you guys this list of features over here. I'm not going to go down everything, but you get a lot of the stuff that's available with the 600 series. Uh, this is a Kepler-based video card, so FXAA, TXAA, Adaptive V-Sync all support it. Here's a look at the contents of the retail box. Some accessories here first off. Uh, they are recommending at minimum a 400 watt power supply for this video card and your entire computer system. Uh, but if you don't have a PCI Express power connector, six pin, you can use two of your Molex connectors provided you have a uh, sufficient enough power supply, of course, uh, over to the six pin in order to power the card because you do need a six pin PCI Express. MSI has been kind enough to provide you with a mini HDMI to standard HDMI adapter. A really nice little add-on because this does have uh, multiple display outputs, but you actually can't make use of that mini HDMI unless you got an adapter, so you can use that right out of the box with that one. You also get a DVI to 15-pin D-sub VGA, analog VGA connector right there. This will only work with one of the two DVI connectors on the board. I'll show you which one. Uh, you also get a couple of screws here, and I'm guessing this is for this little fan that they've included. I will double check that in a moment. Uh, you also get the MSI Quick User's Guide with the uh, basic information on computer assembly. You also get the MSI Afterburner as well as Driver's Disk. Uh, chances are there's updated drivers uh, that are available, so head over to the NVIDIA website for those. Also, chances are there's an updated version of Afterburner, but you can install off the disk if you want to. You also get some info here on the 650 Power Edition, so this is kind of your basic user's manual. They have done it in color, which is nice. And uh, they've taken you through your walkthrough of the installation as well as using the... Uh, the software. Also, a quick little demo there of that uh, trans thermal video card cooling solution, which I'm about to take a closer look at right now. Here's a closer look at the video card itself. I'm starting off with a measurement here because this is a little bit longer than the 650s you've seen, but that is mostly thanks to this cooler. Uh, the PCB does extend out about 9 and 1 8 inches measured from the PCB itself, so make sure yourself, you give yourself enough room for that and actually a little bit room beyond that because you do have a right angle connector there for your PCI Express connector, so that's going to take up a little bit more room beyond that. But this card should fit in most cases right out of the box. Uh, but I did want to sort of give you guys sort of a general look at it. You can see that cooler design right there. The way this works is it's got a couple little tabs here in the end. You can just squeeze those in and sort of give it a slide that way. That will slide it down into that position. And then uh, in this little box over here, which I maybe should have had the forethought to open up beforehand, but there you go, uh, you get an extra fan. And basically you can simply take this fan. You'll notice right here there's a couple little tabs that that will slot down into pops down in like that. 
I'm not going to put it all the way on because uh, the the fan plug is still wrapped around right there. And then you do have a plug on the other side of the cooler right down there so you can plug the fan in and get it up and spinning. So you can pretty easily adjust this cooler and turn it into a two slot cooler rather than a single slot cooler and you can actually slide it back. It tends to stick just a little bit but there we go into that position and then you're back to one slot cooler. And then uh, there's a couple mounting points right there as well so the other option is to pop it on the top like that which essentially makes this a three slot video card. It might even looks like right about three slots. I'm not, I haven't popped it down all the way uh, but that does give you a bit more static pressure across the array of aluminum fins that's down there at the bottom for some increased cooling. Back here at the other end of the card we of course have our display connectors and uh, you also get an MSI logo right there. Uh, that would be right set up in most computer installs like that. Uh, you got a little bit of ventilation area there at the back to allow hot air to move out of the case. You have your connectors right here. So you have two dual link DVI connectors. The one on the right hand side there is, uh, is digital plus analog. So if you're going to use that included adapter, use it with the right connector. Uh, the center one here, digital only. Uh, uh, both, of, both of these are dual links, so they'll support displays up to 2560 by 1600. And then finally, you got that mini HDMI connector right there. The adapter is included, so you can plug that into an HDMI monitor or maybe a big screen TV right out of the box. Here's your PCI Express uh, Gen 3 connector. It's physically the same as PCI Express Gen 2, so that will slot right into any PCI Express Gen 2, 2.1, or 3 motherboard. And uh, then sort of if you look at the back of the card, you can see it's got a brown PCB. This is a custom designed PCB by MSI for this board because um, the typical PCB is a bit shorter than that. And uh, that about wraps it up for our physical look at the card. Oh, I guess I sort of briefly mentioned, but there's your six pin PCI Express connector. Next, we're going to get into our benchmarks and we're running these benchmarks uh, with a 3570K processor, a Z77 motherboard, uh, eight gigs of DDR3 memory running at 2666. And I did want to point out that my suite of benchmarks is typically more geared towards higher end video cards. And this is a bit more of an entry level video card. So that being said, uh, I'm actually comparing this to uh, GTX 580, which is a, a, one of the highest end video cards from the 500 series as well as uh, the 660, which is a step above this from this current series. But I did want to show the performance of this card, uh, and since I do want to be able to show some points of reference, I am uh, running my same benchmarks at 1920 by 1080 that I run for the higher end cards. So here are the benchmarks. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the MSI GeForce GTX 650 Power Edition Overclocked. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.